President-elect Donald Trump bashing the effort to recount votes in three states, calling it ridiculous and a scam. That's surprising, right? Green Party candidate Jill Stein officially requesting a recount in Wisconsin on Friday and continuing to raise money for recounts in Michigan and Pennsylvania. The Hillary Clinton campaign now joining the effort. Mr. Trump firing back at the plans last night, tweeting, quote, the Democrats, when they incorrectly thought they were going to win, asked the election night tabulation be accepted. Not so anymore. And this morning tweeting, Hillary Clinton conceded the election when she called me just prior to the victory speech and after the results were in, nothing will change. Joining me now is Kansas Senator Jerry Moran. He is a member of the Senate Banking Committee and the Senate Appropriations Committee. Senator, thanks for joining us. Um, when you when you look Good morning, at the, Melissa. when you look at the numbers surrounding the recount, Hillary Clinton would have to flip Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and Michigan in order to turn this election around. What do you think are the odds of that? Well, I think the odds are are nearly uh, zero, uh, and so we're going through some efforts that seem to me to be uh, unnecessary. Our country historically, presidential candidates, those who have lost, have rallied around those that won and brought the country together, and I think that's important at this point in our country's history. Uh, if there are legitimate allegations about any kind of cyber tampering with, the, with voting machines across the country, then in my view, a, uh, an election official in one of the states is probably not the place for that uh, consideration to be had. If there's really serious uh, allegations, uh, legitimate ones, then I think this is a matter for law enforcement, the FBI, or intelligence agencies. But this seems to be yeah. one of those political efforts that, uh, at, at raising money and, and stirring the political pot. Well, I mean, a lot of people are calling to mind recounts of the past. But if you look at the actual raw numbers in Michigan, um, where the person requesting it has to pay for it if they want to have a recount, he's up by 10,704 votes. Wisconsin is 22,000. Pennsylvania is 70,000. But in the issue of a recount, when it actually changes, Aren't we usually talking about more like maybe a, a thousand vote margin? These are big margins, no? Uh, absolutely. Uh, history really probably isn't the perfect guide, other than we've had this sense in our country that uh, elections uh, mean results, results means moving forward for a new president. Uh, and in these instances, nothing that uh, is evident would suggest that the outcome of an election, this election, would be changed. And so uh, it seems to be something less than a legitimate. Uh, effort to, uh, yeah. to to determine the outcome of an election, and that's what a recount is about: is who really won. And in this case, that's been determined. And in fact, uh, as has been indicated, Secretary Clinton conceded that she lost. Uh, the Green Party came forward and said that they looked into the possibility that the results were hacked or some votes were hacked. This was an early theory we heard circulating, and they've decided that they don't have clear evidence of that, but they're still interested in a recount. And as a result, more money is pouring into her coffers. At last count, it was just under $6 million for this recount that I think she raised during the whole campaign. Is there any evidence, though, that any of that money is coming from Hillary Clinton or Hillary Clinton supporters? Well, I've, I don't know whether there's evidence of that or not. I've not heard that, not seen that. Uh, and if there is, I assume that will become known uh, through media and other sources. But again, uh, if there, again there's no, no evidence of hacking that I'm aware of. But again, that wouldn't be a determination to be made by a, an election official in one of the states. If that's a, that's a serious violation of federal law uh, and the allegation has been by, uh, that it's been done by other countries, that's an intelligence, FBI, law enforcement issue, and it has nothing to do with the efforts to raise money yeah. uh, on a website to, to do a recount in, uh, in one of the states. As usual, the hypocrisy on this has been rich all the way around. I mean, from every side, you have Jill Stein stepping out and you know wanting to help the process and, and sort of leaning towards Hillary Clinton if she did, in fact, win the state. But in fact, if you look at her number of votes, if she had been out of the race, there are a lot of places where Hillary Clinton would have won if those voters had gone to her instead. Hillary Clinton herself criticizing Donald Trump at the third debate and on the campaign trail um, when she said that he hinted that he wouldn't accept the outcome of the election. I think we have a soundbite of that. Do we have that? Let's listen. Oh, 
sorry, I was wrong about that. We don't have the, but you can imagine what, what she said. I'm sure it echoes in your head because we heard it so many times when she said, um, you know, can you believe it? This is sort of the per first candidate in history who said they're ahead of time that they're not going to accept. I'm horrified. They're not going to accept the outcome. Uh, but hypocrisy is what you see in politics, no? Uh, Melissa, unfortunately, that's, uh, I think that's true. The, 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 the facts don't change, but the rhetoric changes. And uh, I'm of the view that we have a solid election process in the United States. Yes, there are errors or flaws, but I know I, I have been in courthouses, uh, in county clerk's office and election offices uh, across my state, and there are lots of citizens involved in the process, people who come just to work the polls, who come just to count the votes. And those people, in my experience, are doing everything they can to get it right, to make sure yeah. that the votes are counted correctly. Uh, it's not about trying to steal an election. Uh, and so, uh, in my view, Americans historically and rightfully so have accepted the results uh, of an election. Uh, and that's where we should be today as compared to Senator, depending, your, your rhetoric changes depending on whether you're winning or losing. Yeah, I, I mean, I think one thing that makes it tough for people who are upset with the outcome is the popular vote. And they talk about the fact that Hillary Clinton received something like two million more votes than Donald Trump. Do you think that there is an appetite in this country now to maybe rethink or look at the electoral college system? Well, we, we certainly have the electoral college system created by our founders. It's in our constitution, and uh, that was designed for a particular purpose, to force uh, candidates to pay attention to all states. Uh, and while there's always been concern or criticism of the electoral college, uh, again, we ought to make the decision about that, not based upon who wins or who loses, but the value of, the, of that electoral college. And this isn't the electoral college debate ought to be a separate one from what happened yeah. Uh, or what people are claiming happened in this election. All right, Senator, thank you for your time. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. The president-elect... Okay. Mr. Trump on his way back to New York City tonight after spending the long Thanksgiving holiday weekend with his family in Florida. But before he left, he unleashed on Twitter, saying, quote, in addition to winning the Electoral College in a landslide, I won the popular vote if you deduct the millions of people who voted illegally. Now, we should note, Mr. Trump did not elaborate on what illegal voting he was referring to, and there's no indication of widespread fraud that could have affected the outcome one way or the other. Mr. Trump also denounced a push for a recount in three states he won, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Michigan. Wisconsin state officials will meet tomorrow to determine the timeline of the recount, but the other two states are still to be determined. Brian Yannis, live outside Trump Tower in Midtown Manhattan. All right, Brian, what's the president-elect alleging here? Good evening, Laura. Well, look, it appears that the president-elect is questioning the legitimacy of an election in which he won. The fact of the matter is that Hillary Clinton won, has, is winning the popular vote by over 2 million votes nationwide. But by tweeting that he believes that there was possibly millions of fraudulent votes out there, he's essentially going back to what he campaigned on. Remember, he had said during the campaign that he was afraid or uh, at least skeptical of the fact that he thought that there were undocumented immigrants, people who had died that perhaps showed up on voting rolls, and that, that, that perhaps could have fed into fraudulent votes. So by tweeting this, he's essentially questioning the legitimacy of the election. The fact of the matter is that President like Trump and his team are just upset and over the fact that those on the left and that those who support Clinton continue to question his legitimacy uh, as president elect because of the situation. And so he tweeted, it would have been much easier for me to win the so called popular vote than the Electoral College, and that I would only campaign in three or four states instead of the 15 states that I visited. I would have won even more easily and convincingly, but smaller states are forgotten. Again, the president elect Trump here just just uh, clearly over the fact that people are saying, well, look, Hillary Clinton won the popular vote, so therefore he isn't legitimate. And that is, this is his way of saying, well, I would have won either way. Laura? All right, Brian, but Trump's team, they're active too. What are they saying about the recount effort in Wisconsin? Well, look, Trump's chief of staff, Ryan Sprebus, went on Fox News Sunday today with Art Chris Wallace and called the whole recount process in Wisconsin a scam. You know, uh, Green Party uh, candidate Jill Stein opted to go with the recount process in Wisconsin because she said that there probably or could be hacking that could have affected that election, and she thinks it's important that that is checked. But again, Ryan Sprebus says, look, this is nothing but a fundraising scam for the Green Party and for Jill Stein, noting that she only won some 33,000 votes 
in Wisconsin. He also went on and went after Hillary Clinton's team for joining the recount effort, suggesting that they're backing out of a deal brokered by Trump and Clinton, in which they agreed not either candidate would conceal, concede within 15 minutes of the Associated Press announcing a winner on election night. Now, Trump's senior advisor, Kellyanne Conway, said by going with the recount effort, Clinton is essentially undermining President Obama. Listen. This recount by Jill Stein and now the Hillary people is just so confounding and disappointing. Their president, Barack Obama, is going to be in office for eight more weeks. And they have to decide whether they're going to interfere with him finishing his business, interfere no. with the peaceful transition, transfer of power to President-elect Trump and Vice President-elect Pence, or if they're going to be a bunch of crybabies and sore losers about an election that they can't turn around. A Clinton team lawyer says, look, they haven't found any actionable evidence that suggests that there was any widespread fraud or hacking, but that they believe the, the public's concern that they've heard over hacking and the fact that Russia interfered in this election is enough for them to participate in this recount effort. And really, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders says, look, he supports the idea. Listen. It's a legal right. It's not a big deal. I don't think anybody... Secretary Clinton or anybody else thinks there's going to be profound changes. We will see what happens. But the focus right now has got to be doing everything that we can to address the real issues facing the working families of this country. Clinton's team says, look, if Jill Stein decides to go with the recount in Pennsylvania and Michigan, they'll join there as well. Laura? All right, Brian Ennis outside Trump Tower. One thing we know for sure, it's going to be an interesting week coming back from Thanksgiving holiday. And one of our top stories today, the Clinton campaign joining the recount effort in Wisconsin. President-elect Donald Trump calling it a scam. Let's bring in our very fair and balanced panel. Ron Bonjean is a former chief of staff to the Senate Republican Conference. And Mark Levine is a member of the Virginia House of Delegates. Both of them have been on the show. I want to start um, with you, if I may, Mark, and I, and I, um, I want to play a soundbite from Hillary Clinton. It was after the debate, October 24th. I want you to take a listen, and then I'm going to get your response. And Ron, too. Donald said something, well, he said a lot of things that were troubling, but he said something truly horrifying. He became the first person running for president, Republican or Democrat, who refused to say that he would respect the results of this election. That is a direct threat to our democracy. I think I know how you're going to respond, but is, is this an epic waste of time, or is this ensuring the uh, confidence in, in the American political system? Well, look, I don't think it's going to overturn the election, but I do think it does ensure confidence. Look, prior to the election, because of what Donald Trump said, a majority of his voters believed the elections were rigged. A minority of Clinton voters believe the elections were rigged. Let's show the American people that they're not. Let's count all the votes and show that there's, there's not. I mean, Hillary Clinton accepted the results of the election. This obviously wasn't her decision to do this. But, but it's her uh, a decision to say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to support this. You know, it's happening. And she's going to be counted. Her lawyers are going to be there. At the end of the day, election machines can be hacked. It's one of the reasons why in Virginia I've strongly supported saying we should have paper records for all voting. We're going to do okay. that in 2020. Okay. Let's right. just show Americans that the votes are accurate. All right, Ron, I, I have a feeling that you're dis disagreeing yeah. with that statement. This is a gigantic waste of time. The Obama administration... And money. And money. The Obama administration has said that the election results should stand, that they believe in them, completely undercutting... Jill Stein's effort. The one person this has helped is Jill Stein. It raises her but name. But does it help Jill Stein? I, 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 we have a, I have a full screen quote I want to put up. It was her during her interview um, on NPR. And she basically said, and I don't have it in front of me, which is why I'm waiting, that, it, that this isn't going to necessarily change the outcome. Right, that's exactly right. It helps her because of the fundraising that's going on. This is costing millions of dollars. And in the Milwaukee Journal in Wisconsin, the Green Party, which she belongs to, said whatever money is not spent is going to be spent on their campaign schools, their recruitment. So this is not exactly, when Donald Trump says it's a scam, I completely believe him. This is, this is not just about certifying the election results. She says it's probably fine. Let me actually agree with Ron. I think Jill Stein should commit publicly today that every penny not spent on the recount will go back to the people who gave her the money. This shouldn't be used as a fundraiser for the Green Party. Yeah, I agree with that. she's not going to do that. Uh, she may not, but she should. And I think we should call on her. We liberals should call on her to do that. This money was, used, was designed for a specific purpose for the recount. She shouldn't be using it for the Green okay. Party. Okay. Um, we've seen Donald Trump put up a, a number of tweets this morning. Initially, he stayed sort of taking the high road, and then he started to really respond. How should he be handling this? Because it's a lot of money. A lot 
lot of people need to work to do this recount, especially if it's going to be in more than one state right now. It's just Wisconsin. How, how should he be handling the response? I want to start with you, Ron. Look, he's sent out a series of tweets now. We know how he feels, right. <laughs> no question about it. And I think he's made his point, and now he needs to leave it to the campaign. What he's doing with those series of tweets is unusual for a president-elect, but he's getting around the mainstream media and making sure his voters understand what his message is. And I, and I, I do respect that. In the end, you don't think this is damaging to, to the Democratic Party? Look, this is not taxpayer money. This is legally allowable. Jill Stein has every right to do this. It's going to happen. I think if it brings more confidence in our elections that they haven't been hacked, it's a good thing. And also, I think it's good for people to remember, we need to get rid of those electronic voting machines. We shouldn't have hackable voting machines. I'd like to see that happen in Virginia in 2017. Do you think that's going to happen? Well, first of all, I, I have to say this makes Hillary Clinton really look like a sore loser. It makes her look bad. Second of all, say these, these voting machines said the, they're Internet proof. They're not connected to the Internet. It doesn't they cannot, matter. They can still be hacked. Cannot be hacked. They can still be hacked. That's exactly what Manually. the experts are but it's saying. But to the states. That, that's Absolutely. State decision. Absolutely. And that's actually more and more states are moving to paper records. In fact, Michigan and Wisconsin have paper records. It's largely Pennsylvania that's the problem. Shame on Pennsylvania. They need to fix that. And it's, and it's something that, frankly, more and more states are doing. It should be a national movement. We should have confidence in our elections. All right. Well, um, we're going to have you guys back because we're going to see how this goes. Um, like we talked about, it's going to be a lot of money spent and a lot of people working to do this. So. Private money, though. Not public. Private money. But millions of it. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I very much appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for you. having us. Well, hello, everyone. President-elect Donald Trump pushing back against those plans to recount the votes in one or possibly three states that you know were pivotal to his election victory over Hillary Clinton. Mr. Trump calling the attempt led by Green Party candidate Jill Stein, quote, a scam. And he's even claiming that she will not actually spend any of the donations she collects for the recount on that recount effort. Hello, everyone, and welcome to America's News Headquarters. I'm Eric Shaw. Hi, Eric. Hi, Eric. Hi, thank you. And I'm Marcel Neville. Hillary Clinton officially joining that fight to revisit voting totals in Wisconsin. Clinton's camp saying it is also on board if Stein follows through with recount requests in Michigan and Pennsylvania. So what will happen? Peter Ducey is live from Mar a Lago in Palm Beach, where the uh, Trump spent the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. Uh, he has more. Hi, Peter. Hi, Eric. And this morning, the president-elect unloaded on liberals that are supporting this recount effort using Hillary Clinton's own words to try and convince them to cut it out. He took to Twitter, as he often does this morning, to write this. Quote, Hillary Clinton conceded the election when she called me just prior to the victory speech and after the results were in. Nothing will change. And that shot at the left preceded a six-tweet long posting of Hillary Clinton's answer from a debate about respecting the outcome of the election. So Trump is arguing that Clinton's wish was to be done talking about challenges and loopholes by now without really calling her out directly. But his new White House chief of staff, Reince Priebus, does have a very direct message for Clinton allies lending their services to this recount. It was their team that cut a deal with our team that said when the AP called the race, they would call within 15 minutes and concede, which they did. It is a total and complete hypocritical joke that the, that the group of people that thought that they were nervous about President-elect Trump not conceding are the people that are conducting recounts in states where we've won by over 68,000 votes. Another top Trump aide came out this morning very forcefully against the possibility of Mitt Romney joining the cabinet. Kellyanne Conway says she's not sure it's worth giving him the Secretary of State job just for the sake of party unity. There was the Never Trump movement and then there was Governor Mitt Romney. He went out of his way to hurt Donald Trump. He gave two speeches that I can recall in this calendar year and they were both about Donald Trump. As far as we know, the president-elect still has not left Mar-a-Lago since arriving here on Tuesday. But this afternoon, he is going to pack up and head home for Manhattan, where tomorrow, eight potential new members of the administration await him for job interviews. Eric. All right, Peter. Be a busy day tomorrow. Thank you.